Artha Land is a publicly listed company in the Philippine Stock Exchange, and we focus on sustainable developments. Um, what I can say is Artheland is the foremost green developer in the Philippines. And how to prove that is a track record in terms of developments that we have done. And our first development before was Aria Residences, which is quite well known in Bonifacio Global City. This building was turned over seven years ago. And imagine seven years ago until today, we are still the first and only LEED Gold certified residential building in the country. So that means planning started way before seven years. That was about nine and 10 years ago. And we were already talking about sustainable projects. That is the biggest differentiator between our company and other developers. Second, I would like to say is our office building here in BGC. It's the world's first edge zero carbon building in the world. And this is certified by the International Finance Corporation of the World Bank Group. At the same time, it is multi-awarded since it is also certified LEED Platinum. Again, first and only, and this was just awarded um, two weeks ago, our um, horizontal development in Laguna, Sevina Park, was just handed the LEED Platinum for neighborhood development. Again, another first and only, our Savina Park Villas and the townhouses is on track for multi-certification LEED Gold Home and Edge Advance. So with all these certifications, these sh uh, it shows that Arthaland has full focus in terms of sustainable developments. Another thing we would like to talk about is approaching net zero carbon. I think this, some this is something very important that most developers should look at. We are the first in the Philippines for a developer to sign up and first in Asia for a developer to sign up for the advancing net zero commitment of the World Green Building Council. So we have committed that 100% of our portfolio will be net zero carbon by 2030, even though the commitment says that we have to do it by 2050. So we're actually committing 20 years ahead of what was required. And at the same time, we are also the first developer in the country to be par part of the climate group based from London. And we actually encourage everyone to join the climate group because they have great initiatives in terms of how to save the environment. And I believe they have a climate uh, week when, uh, this September. Now about the topic, reshaping workplace reality and best practices, I want to focus on three main things. One is sustainability. Second is digital transformation. And the last one is wellness. Let's start with sustainability. It's not easy to be sustainable. And, and I, I believe people have different concepts of what sustainability really is. You know? And when I say true sustainability, it talks about the complete features of the project. You're not talking about one or two pieces of sustainability. You're not just talking about green and open spaces. You're talking about specific specifications of each building that you develop. Now, why go for four certifications? Is it just for marketing purposes or is there specific needs for each? Let's go to LEED. LEED basically gives you specifications and ideas to follow from your design and conceptual phase all the way to operations. So take note of that. What is important is during the conceptualization of your project, Sustainability is already a part of it. All the way to construction on how you dispose waste and how you work towards the finish, uh, to finish your cons the construction of your building. Berde by the Philippine Green Building Council, basically it's translating and adjusting the specifications of LEED towards the local environment here in the Philippines. Talking about COVID, I think well certification is also quite important. People are nowadays are very conscious when it comes to health and wellness. Now they talk about nutrition, they talk about the indoor air quality. And finally, EDGE by the International Finance Corporation. Now EDGE focuses on the savings. Savings on water, savings on electricity. So each of these certifications talk about how you can enhance your property. Now, 
talking about what are the advantages and why we have to do that now. And you see a lot of people talking about sustainable just because of the COVID situation. Recently, everyone has issues with electricity consumption, right? People were posting in social media about how, how high their electricity bills are. People are talking about the shortage in water. That is one thing that sustainable buildings can help in, right? That will give you lower consumption in terms of power, lower consumption in terms of water. It increases the property value. And basically what we want to educate people is to ask the right questions. Before, when people are investing into real estate, they only talk about what is the per square meter cost? How big is the unit? Now they will be asking what kind of filtration system do you use? What other specifications do you have in your building? I think those are the important things that we have to educate our buyers about. It's also ideal and preferred choice of international and global locators. A lot of multinational companies have now gone into lead. Even our neighborhood Starbucks have lead stores, right? So it's very important for us to go towards sustainable developments. Improving and living the living working conditions of everyone within the building. Within the building, take note of that. I mean, a lot of developments and a lot of infrastructure, whether it's BGC, Eastwood, or any other estates, already have the open spaces outside. But let's talk about the building inside. What can you provide? And the last thing, and I think it's important for everyone who has kids, leave more for the future generations. I think that is one of the most important aspects of sustainability. Now, when you talk about sustainability, you talk about three pillars. You have economic, social, and environmental. Economic is the savings and the capital appreciation that you will get, which is way higher than a normal development. Social well-being, you talk about the efficiency of the people working in the, uh, in the building. You talk about the health of the people living inside the project. And environmental, I think, is obvious we're in. We have to help the climate change. Now, when you talk about building sustainable features and the best practices, you have to start, as I mentioned, from the design of the building. You cannot say that you're bringing in an, a lot of sunlight inside the building, but not talk about the heat. This is where double glazed glass comes in, right? So you allow the sunlight to the light to come in, but also at the same time prevent heat. And preventing heat means more efficient air conditioning system. So one relates to the other. You cannot just pick one and say, okay, I'm going to put glass, but not worry about the air conditioning system. It all re relates to each other. Efficient air conditioning system talks about good airflow. And because of the COVID situation, people are talking about indoor air quality, which now goes into energy recovery ventilator. It talks about the filtration system in your building, whether you use MERV filters or you talk about HEPA filters, everything is related. And you know, even changing the filters will have to change your ducting system, will have to change the type of blowers or the type of motors that you have. So it's not something that you can just put in any time in an existing building. Again, you have to plan for it from the start, from the concept and design of the project. And of course, there are a lot of other features such as orientation of your building, LED lamps, efficient water fish features, green and open spaces, and rainwater harvesting. So I can go on and on about the features of sustainability, but that is one aspect I think we're in. It's not just going to be a trend. It's going to be the new norm in terms of um, development of projects. Now let's talk about digital transformation and everyone working from home would understand this and everyone going back to the office would also understand this. First is the government required health and declaration form. Normally you go to the building and you fill it up there. What we do is everything is online, filled up, sent, us, sent to us electronically and filtered and tested before we allow the entry. Second is instead of using the small thermal guns, which we feel is not that accurate. I mean, you can test it twice and it gives you two different temperature readings. We use thermal scanners being used in the airports. Now these are more accurate. The flow of people going into the building is better, no clogging. And we have a nurse operating it so that they can immediately see who needs assistance or not. This is one of the advances and digital transformation systems that we have done. Another nice thing that I would like to show is the virtual concierge. 
um, to prevent any face-to-face -face contact, we have already deployed our virtual concierge. Basically, what you have to do is wave in front of the camera and you will be able to talk face-to-face -to, -face to a concierge. Here's a short video. So this is virtually contact-free, which is quite important in this situation. And what we are um, incorporating in all of our new projects and adjusting in our current projects is once you talk to the virtual concierge, log in your credentials, they will be able to give you a QR code through your phone so that you can access the elevator directly. So this is full destination using the QR code without having to press a single button in the elevator. Now let's talk about the new wellness. Um, I think this is quite important today. And what we have is what we call the Arteland Potager Garden. This one we have already incorporated in one of our residential projects, Aria, and we have committed to provide in 100% of our projects. We provide organic vegetables and fruits to our tenants and unit owners. So for example, in Aria, we provide herbs such as rosemary, mint, basil, lemongrass, we have Kangkong, Gabi Pandan, and, and we play around with it. We're in, we have an area where in this area is for sinigang ingredients, something like that. So this actually encourages people, you know, to have your own organic farm within your own place. And we've had several, se several webinars talking about how to do organic farming within your own homes or within your condominiums. I think a lot of developers have done this, the automatic sanitizers. So this can be seen all around our projects. Talking about wellness, our cafeteria. Our cafeteria has a licensed nutritionist and they will be able to help you in terms of the food that you eat, what a number of calorie count and everything else. So the, the licensed nutritionist can actually help you with that. air filters around every common area of the building. Of course, you have, well, you don't have to face the walls, but you know, um, social distancing, even in the elevators, and you have, of course, your automatic sanitizers in each elevator. The nice thing that we did in our building is basically to group the offices, the tenants in different elevators, because the specifications of the building are quite high we were able to group the tenants so that contact tracing is quite easy. So if someone is found positive of COVID, you can easily identify which elevator they went through and do contact tracing. We purchased our own misting machines, right? These are nanotech um, uh, covers or, or coating that protects the surface up to a month. And this is aside from the normal um, disinfecting that you do. So this is above the regular disinfection. You have the UV light disinfection for all incoming documents, all incoming parcels. And the one thing I would like to highlight in terms of wellness, we, we, we often forget the frontliners. And when we talk about the frontliners, especially when prop, with property developments, we talk about the receptionist, the concierge, the security, the housekeeping personnel, and the maintenance personnel. These people we forget. But in fact, they are the pillars in terms of maintaining and making sure that our properties are running well, the property managers. And to help with that, we have on-site rapid testing. 100% of the security, back office, housekeeping, accounting staff go through rapid testing at the cost of the company to make sure that the building is COVID-free. Another thing, we, fondly, uh, we, we fondly call this the ACPT Hilton, right? To encourage people to stay in because we do testing every 15 days, right? And the nice thing about it is we provided, number one, a fully air-conditioned space wherein they can sleep and stay daily. Number two, it has 16 individual showers, as you can see here in the lower right, with total brand low-flow fixtures. So it's not like 
any shower enclosure just we just put in, right? We make sure that these are still abide by the sustainability factors of the building. And of course, when you're staying in a hotel, which we call ACPT Hilton, it's important to say that there's a 50 inch LED TV there with Netflix subscription. So these small things, you know, um, give them encouragement, make them, uh, encourage them to work harder, stay there. Sometimes they miss their families, but at least they enjoy while, stay, while staying inside the building. The last thing is we com uh, provided 100% complete shuttle service to all the employees going to work. This is to prevent them from going through public transportation. I think this is very important because the more they commute, the more the chances that they get infected. So for Arthaland itself and its contractual employees, we provide 100% shuttle service to those coming into work. So again, let's not forget the frontliners of our buildings. So thank you very much. Um, that's a short presentation about Arthaland and what we've, we have been doing.